Welcome to Sipping on Excellence. This is Coach KJ, and I'm here with my man, my dude, the Doc. And this is where we will be discussing the exceptional that is absolutely attainable. My friends, here's to living that extraordinary life. Cheers. Oh, let me get comfortable here. Let's set it off. <laughs> I'm shaking it into the day. Motherfucker over here shimmying. <laughs> shimmy, shimmy, y'all. Shimmy, yeah. Shimmy, oh, yeah. Oh, man. Welcome. 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 Another episode of Sipping, Sipping on, on Excellence, Excellence, y'all. We are uh, we back at it. Let me yeah. get my mic right. Right. While he's getting his mic, I am Coach Kenneth Johnson. And uh, <laughs> Dr. Lionel Hunt. Let's uh, let's get this party started. Oh, yes. Because intentionally we procrastinated long enough. <laughs> <laughs> Got too comfortable. <laughs> People are gonna be like, "What the fuck are they talking about today?" Right, right, right. <laughs> um. Oh man, I would love to talk about intent. Mm-hmm. Um, I put out a post today, and uh, it might fall into. Well, it ain't today because I don't know when y'all are gonna hear this thing. But I know. The day I'm we still sweating from my workout. The, you keep talking. The, the day we recorded this, and uh, what it was, it was a conversation about what people see and how they. So, I took the picture. One of my patients complimented me on the picture that we took for the website. Okay. And she's like, I came to see you because of because I thought you had a pleasant face, blah, blah, whatever. And I was just like, this woman came to see me because she thought my brother and I had a good look. Didn't know about our skill level, none of this stuff. And I always said it's amazing how an aesthetic photograph can appeal to the masses. Yes. And so it brought up thoughts. You know, she, she later on decided to have surgery with me because of the research that she did after that. But why wouldn't you do your research ahead of time? You know, and so the point of this conversation is that I had another conversation with somebody who you and I both know who has a giant following on social media. Mm-hmm. And pretty intelligent woman, you know, she's smart, but she was complaining that people only respond to her because she's just a pretty face and a nice body. She wished that people would see more of, you know, see her more for her business acumen, her intelligence, all this other stuff, right? And my response was, if you want people to see you for more than just a pretty face, you have to show them more than just your pretty face. You know me, I always got a song in my head. I'm just thinking of the song Poison. Yeah, you know, and so it's like, what is your intent? What did, your social media, what is your intention? What is your intent from your social media? And I finished off my post by saying, don't be mad or don't complain about the fish you catch when you keep throwing out the same bait, you know, I mean, or something to that effect. And I was just like, you're mad that people are only seeing one thing when all you're doing is showing them. You want to change how people see you, change change, change the content. You got to change your algorithm. Change the content. The way you present yourself. Yeah. You know, and so today, but the reason why, because it's easy and it feeds the ego and you get all the clicks and likes and you get all the the sponsorships based on what you look like. And so I tried to explain, okay, your photograph, that's going to catch the attention. But you don't say shit in your post. Right. So if you want people to see that you're smart, see that you're intelligent, Say something of value. Let them let you be the eye candy, but let your mind keep the attention. Right. You know, and she's looking at me like, uh, I'm like, 
What if it turns some people off? Then you don't care what people think of you. All you care is they like what they see. So we shouldn't even be having this conversation. And I ended it right there. I'm like, you don't want to change your content up because you're afraid it's going to change the way people see you and your audience will change. And she was like, ah, I'm like, enough said. Well, you know, this conversation goes no further. Yeah. And so you get stuck in that level of comfort, mm-hmm. you know, and you, you become comfortable with I'm hot. But what happens when you no longer are the standard hot? Right. You're, you're going to keep chasing the standard hot because you want to be able to keep up. Right. But you, you want to stay relevant, but you don't realize. Well, like you say, you're still throwing out the same bait. Yeah. You want to stay relevant. Change why you're relevant. You know? And, and don't be afraid to ruffle feathers. Don't be. Who are you speaking to? Who do you want to speak to? I want people to see me for me. Nobody sees you for you. They see you for what you're putting out. And that's it. Exactly. That's all you got. Your, and I told her, I was like, your content is very one-dimensional. Mm-hmm. And so if you don't want to change your content, make a second site. Mm-hmm. Have this one be your thirst trap, your eye candy, whatever it is you're promoting on this side. Promote your other side as well so people can see who you are, yeah. your personality, your brain, how it works. You know, because you're not a dummy. I have a very good friend in the in the uh, fitness industry. That's what she does. She has one site where it's, you know, the hit programs, the nutrition, the fitness. You know, her, her husband films everything. But he also films her and he created this second site where it's, are you having these problems? What's going on? I can tell you what happened to me. This is where my nutrition, these are the, these are the downfalls that I had. Mm-hmm. And speaking the language that she wants to speak. And she's reaching out to so many more people more in depth than just like, like, oh, yeah, I like that exercise. Okay, I like that exercise. Okay, okay, okay. The other, ex- everything else, she's really getting into the mind. Yeah. Like she used one, it, it was amazing. Someone says something to her and she put it on both. And, oh, you know, you're, you're, you're built like a man, you know, you're, you know, you're too muscular. And she said, instead of going in and like going back at that person, she started talking about like the whole idea of the idea of what other people see you as and how you feel and, and what you're putting out and you're just not going to be for everyone. And, and dude, she was winning. Yes. She was Killing it. Yeah, but people are afraid to step out of that comfort zone. Right. You know, and it's kind of what led us to to our topic for today. You know, we want to discuss multiple things, you know, being intentional, um, talking about how being comfortable and staying in a comfort zone really is what stifles success, mm-hmm. you know, Um And along with that, people put off what could be great for them because of fear, because of comfort, you know, oh, I need to do this, but I'm kind of, I'm holding off because of whatever reason, you know, so we procrastinate. We don't really charge forward. We always look for a reason to not do some shit. Like your girl was putting off the possibility, procrastinating. And holding back on her possibility because of what she thinks other people are going to think. And she knows what, you know, she doesn't realize that the people who she's attracting currently could give a shit about what's between her ears. But she yet she gets mad or irritated by the fact that that's what she attracts. And when they meet her in person... All they do is compliment her looks and her body and this and that. And I'm like, well, that's all you put out there. Not that saying you don't look great, so put it out there. But you have to show people what you want them to know about you. You can't expect them to just look for it. 
Because I'm not going to, if I, if you rolled up on me, I'm not going to look at you and be like, damn, I bet she's smart. I told her that. <laughs> I was like, no. Yeah. That's not what. And God bless that you know her because you're able to tell her. Yeah. You know. You know, people don't want to hear the truth. No. You know. Um, and so that little story, just let's dive right into this shit. Um, if you want to be successful, if you want to be sort of, you want to thrive in any scenario. Mm -hmm. For example, let's talk about work. You want to be, you want to move up that ladder at work. You want your, if you're an entrepreneur, if you want your business to grow, if you are a nine to five or working for somebody else, but yet you want that raise or whatever it may be, you have to be intentional with your movements. You have to be intentional with how you present yourself. You wake up in the morning and be intentional with your life because if you're not, other people are going to know that as well. They're going to, people see that shit. If you're not moving with intent, like you're just going through the motions, you come off as somebody who doesn't give a shit about life. You come off as somebody who's not going to be the person I'm going to go to and be like, oh, that's my go to because I know they're going to get after it. You're not that person, you know? Um, I want to get healthy, but you're not intentional with your diet. You're not intentional with your workouts. You know, I wish I were smarter, but you're not intentional with reading. You don't choose the right books to read. You watch TV and you listen to, you know, social media all the time, as opposed to journaling or writing every day, listening to an audio book, yes, exactly. listening to a, a podcast where you can learn something, you know, it's figure out what works for you and be intentional with implementing it into your world. So that way you can grow. And I think a lot of us just aren't that way. And I, and frankly, I think a lot of us are lazy mm. and I think a lot of it comes from that. You know, why aren't we better than we are? Why aren't we more successful than we are? Why, these answers are out there. Especially now. But you don't want to dig in, you don't want to dig yeah. deep and try to figure out why. Because the last thing we want to do is blame ourselves for our lack of success. Right. We want to blame everybody else. You oh, know. it was because I was stuck at this job. Oh, it was because, you know, I was in this relationship. Oh, it was because it's always a oh, always because. Yeah, I'm comfortable. Just admit it. You know, and we're not okay with being uncomfortable, but there's a reason why they call it growing pains because growth hurts. Yeah. It stings a little bit. Yeah. It makes it, it's uncertain, yeah. you know? And if you don't take that step outside of that comfort zone, you will never know your capabilities. Yeah. But I think what one of the problems is people don't understand what their intent is, what that outcome is, what is it that they're looking for. They have an idea, but they, it, it's not concrete to them. They haven't yet owned it, possessed it. Like, this is mine. Okay, a perfect example. Jerry wanted a gym. He came in, he left, he left, um, uh, whatever uh, gym he was in, mm -hmm. started training privately. But the day he walked into that gym, met him, we talked, says, I said, so what's your plan? He's like, oh, I'm going to have a gym. I want a gym. This is, uh, within the next three years, I'm going to have a gym. He said it literally every Speak single day. Speak it into existence. He kept speaking into existence. He kept attacking it. He kept looking up, kept doing the homework. After work, he would go check out different spots, you know, in between sessions. Moving with intent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every single day. I train out of his gym, <laughs> you know. It's a great guy to follow. Yeah, and having, having random conversations, even with me, about gym leases or leasing space mm -hmm. and locations. 
doesn't know if I know anything about it or not. Mm -hmm. But it can hurt because you never know who's listening to that conversation. You never know who you're speaking to. Or who you know. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. You never know who you're speaking to. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, hey, that shit's not my forte, but <laughs> here's somebody you need to call. Let me make a phone call for you real quick. Mm -hmm. You know, but people don't, if I don't see that you're moving with intent, I'm less inclined to help you. Mm -hmm. Because you could talk all day. And say, I want, I want, I want. There's plenty of people who say, I want it all. I want the big house, the car. I want the success. I want all that. Okay, cool. What'd you do today to kind of take a walk in that direction? Oh, well, you know, I'm working on some things. I'm working on some things. You is the biggest anything. sentence of procrastination I've ever heard. Because people who are working on things never say, I'm working on some things. There's a whole lot of people that run around looking busy that are running in place. Yeah. Why? Because they're afraid to take that step forward, so they just jog in place. Yeah. I look busy. I'm scrambling. I'm moving. I'm cleaning up. I'm just moving, shuffling shit around. Yeah. But it's still a mess. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. It a, it, perfect example for me is I had to... I had to take ownership. I said, I wasn't even using the word that I'm a coach. I was still a trainer that was talking about getting into coaching. I had to start using the language, I'm a coach. I think about it. How long did it take you to, 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 to even though people have been calling you Coach KJ forever, but you had to wrap your head around, I'm a coach. Yeah. It, yeah. You know? And I didn't realize for myself that I was not using that language. Because you're coaching the whole time. There's trainers. You've been coaching as long as I've known you. Mm -hmm. You know, and so the problem is a lot of people out there feel like if, if I make the transition and start saying, oh, I'm a coach, am I going to lose my training business? Mm -hmm. Or are people going to see me differently and not look at me as a trainer? And when instead you should be saying, now they're going to look at me a trainer plus mm. as opposed to a coach minus. Right. You know what I mean? And it's just a mindset. You know, it's, for example, in my field, it's let me put myself out there and say, you know what? I'm going to now start targeting this demographic and that demographic or I'm going to say, you know what? Let me start opening up my eyes to other possibilities in this field as opposed to just sticking with what I know, which is surgery. What else in the medical field? How can I spread my wings? How can I spread my wings on the business side? How can I spread my wings on the industry side of, you know, I got an engineering degree. Why aren't I using it? And over the past few years, I've been like, let me tap into that resource. I got it. Might as well use it. Yeah. But in the beginning, I was like, oh, I got to stick to this because I just got to build, 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 build this. The more patients I take care of, the better it is. But I'm stifling a whole side of my success because I'm only sticking with what was comfortable, which is being a doctor. And there's so much more that of doors that can be opened because I'm a doctor that I don't even think about. Yeah. There's a book that I read. I can't remember the author or the name of the book. One of the things he talked about was uh, the difference between high achievers versus high performers. And high achievers are people like what you just said. I'm stuck with this because I know this and I'm just going to, I can just keep grinding in this, but I'm so narrow in my focus. A high performer knows that he's a high achiever with this, but opens up the platform for the possibility of other things. And I think one of the things that kind of made me take a step back was going through school, going through med school, going through residency and all this, we're always, people always tell us doctors are poor businessmen. Doctors are poor. I mean, I'm sure you've heard it. Doctors don't make good businessmen doc, because we spend all our time in school. And so I used to always say, hey, I'm no businessman, but 
So I was speaking into existence that I wasn't a businessman. Yeah. And then finally I was like, wait a minute. I know more than that cat. I'm asking his advice and the shit he's telling me is wrong. So then I started saying, you know what? Huh. Let me dip my hand into the business pot and see what happens. Oh shit. That was successful. Wait a minute. I kind of know some shit. And when I say I know some shit, it's because I know how to pick the right attorney, the right accountants, the right this, the right that. I don't need to know it all. I just need to know where to find it. Yeah. And ever since I started doing that, boom, doors started opening and opportunities start opening. But as long as I keep telling myself I can't do something, then I'll never will do it. Yeah. And there was no reason why I couldn't do it. It's just because everybody said people like me can't do it. So I just assumed they meant me too. So it's, it's allowing others to dictate my success or dictate my ability to progress. And I think that's where we sit back and be like, well, I am comfortable here. So why not just stay here? Because this is pretty good. This is okay. This, I'm doing all right. We're good here. But being all right and good here doesn't get me where I want to be. Yeah. If I'm good here, that means I'm no longer growing. And all I want to do is grow, whatever that means. Yeah. You know, and so you got to be uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. You got to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, one of my old clients, he, <laughs> he was telling me his story about how he built his business. He was in the telecom industry. And what he did was he was a tech mm -hmm. out in the streets handling his business. But at the same time, he was constantly figuring out, okay, what's missing, what's missing, what's missing. And he figured out the one avenue that was missing. Yeah. And instead of saying, oh, well, you know, why don't you guys do this? He said, I need to build this. Well, I don't know how to build it. I just, I know I'm smart enough to hire the right people to build it. And so he went out and found all the right people, pulled them together, didn't make any money for several years. Yeah. And it just, and it eventually just took off. And when it took off, bruh, it took off. Yeah, because he was intentional with what he wanted. Yeah. You know, um, looking back, we were talking about earlier social media. Somebody asked me, well, what's the intent of your, so why did you start social media? And my assistant was like, people should get to know you. And so my thought process behind social media was be intentional with exposing yourself, mm -hmm. all aspects, your, you as an individual, you as a man, you as a doctor, you as a human being, whatever that mm -hmm. may be, and then figure out a way to tie it all together. And then what ends up happening? You, people see the human side of you. So the doctor side of you grows, which grows the business side of you. And then all of a sudden, here we are doing a podcast. Here we are doing different things because the social platform has opened up. Why? Because we didn't keep it one dimensional. Yeah. We, but I think but it was all with the intent of letting people in to the workings and how we move as individuals and people. Yeah, but I think also what it, the, the intention of what you did was you kept it simple, the word social. You showed the social aspect of yourself. Yes. Not, I'm riding in this car, I'm on this plane, I'm doing this. No, who you are as a person. And that reflected socially. And it wasn't about, look at the incredible surgery I did. It was, look at what this surgery did for this person. Correct. So it was always centered around individuals, whether it was me as an individual or the patient as an individual, mm -hmm. but it was still centered around life or your contribution to your foundation. Yeah. It's all about individuals. That, the indiv individuals. Correct. You know, and so as long as there's good intentions, you know, that's a start, but those good intentions have to be backed by action. Absolutely. You know, you could have all the good intentions in the world. <laughs> if you don't do shit about it, 
then <laughs> nothing will ever happen. <laughs> Pretty much. God, I meant to call her. Well, you but did. you never did. So guess what? She's on to. The She's mask. married to somebody else now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Or if you're in your comfort zone, oh, I don't approach like that because I'm a fear of rejection. If you're uncomfortable being afraid, you'll never get anywhere. Never. Are you going to ask for, I'm comfortable charging $10 an hour, or I'm comfortable being paid minimum wage. I'm afraid if I ask for more, I might get fired. But what if you don't? But because you're comfortable, I'm not going to just offer you a lot more when you're only asking for this. Right. You know, as a boss, I'm going to be like, Tim, you want to work for me for that much? Cool. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to be like, nah, you deserve so much more. If you don't feel you deserve it, why am I going to give it to right. you? Be intentional with what you want. Be intentional with what you need. You know, I think, I think most of us aren't. No. No. You know? I don't even think we understand the word intentional. No. I really, I, I agree. I really think people just have no concept of what that means. I have, um, I have a client currently, and I always call her my spiritual client. Okay. Because our conversations are so in-depth, and we always start everything off. So what's your intentions for today? Always. Every single time. I was telling her I was going on vacation next week. She said, so when you go, what's your intention when you uh, go? Like, just the smallest of times. And you'll find that if you attach a level of intention, let's say going on vacation, I want to connect with my wife more. I want to be able to rest more. I want to finish a book. I want to, whatever it is, you'll be drawn to that and you will put more action behind that. But if you just like, oh, I'm going on this vacation and I'm just, we're talking about vacation, first of all. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's call it is what it is. Right. You're going on vacation. Yes. You're going away. Yeah. Which means you're not doing what you normally do all the time. You have an opportunity to explore because you're wide open. So what are, what are my intentions to attach my mind and my thought and my feelings and my heart to that are going to allow me to be fulfilled? Yeah. And I always tell people, people ask me this all the time, you know, or they'll tell me, I'm going to do X or I want Y or I need Z. And the first thing I ask them is why. Why, why do you, why, why are you waking up at 4.30 in the morning? What are you hoping for for the day? And what do you intend to make happen for that day by waking up at 4.30 instead of 6? What are you going to cram into that extra hour and a half? And... They're like, uh, one of my friends is like, I get up and work out. Well, okay, so you're going to get up and work out with the intention of what? Why? You know, somebody asked me, well, why do you work out? Like, you, I was like, because I intend to move as long as I can. So, well, why did you get up and get on the rower this morning? Because I wanted to move a little better today. And I want to keep in motion. I feel better. My intention is to be better today than yesterday, you know, and it's one thing to say all these little cliches. Uh, what's your intention? I intend to be better. Okay. Well, how? Wow. What are you going to do? Yeah. How and, and why? Yeah. Why do you want to be better? You don't think you're good enough? And two, how do you intend to be better? Like what, what action item are you going to do? What's your action item number one? Yeah. Once you figure out your why. Fill out your house immediately. People will always say what they want. I want this. Why? Okay. Why do you want it? Yeah. Why? Oh, because I, I want to be successful so I can take care of my family. Cool. That's a great why. Now, what's step one? You don't have a plan, do you? Well, no. Overall, I plan to. No, 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 no. Not overall. Yeah. 
overall, I plan to win the lottery. Yeah. <laughs> how, yeah. How do you plan on doing it? How? Well, this evening, I'm going to drive over to 7-Eleven, and I'm going to buy a ticket. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But that's, yeah, but yeah, but you that's how I intend you to can't win. Play, you can't, can't win if you don't play. Yeah. But <laughs> most people don't think like that. No. I want all of this stuff, but I don't know how to start. You know? And if you want to win a fucking race, start by putting one foot in front of the other. Yeah. I th- yeah. Yeah. <sighs> It's so it's it's actually frustrating because I know I've had my own levels of frustration, but at the same time, I know that I don't blame anybody else, and I know what actions need to be taking place. So I start taking those steps. Like for me, one is I got to move more. I have to, regardless, just because of the hips, I have to. Yep. Okay. Did a half mile on treadmill. Did a half mile. Reverse walking on treadmill. I try to do another half mile. Okay, the hip says stop. I did better than I did yesterday. All right, here we go. Here we go. But my intention is to get just one to two percent better each and every time I attack it. Well, like for example, when I talk to people who friends of mine, they always come to me, the single guy with relationship problems, right? <laughs> and so. It's funny because, and they're always female friends of mine. And I was like, well, yeah. I'm having problems in my relationship, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, okay, so what's the problem? Well, it's this. He never does this. And he's, I'm like, cool. What about you? You can't change him. So is there anything you can do that will better the relationship? Well, if he would just, no, 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 that's not what I asked you. What is it that you can do to make things better in your mind? What do you see? Where do you see this relationship going? Do you want to marry this guy? Do you, where, where do you see this relationship going? What are your intentions? Yes. What are your intentions with this guy? Do you want, do you want this to grow and all of that? And if you're like, yes, okay, well then, you can't control his part. You can, can only control your part. So what are you going to do today to help make things a little bit better? And you should be, you'd be surprised at how many people get stuck with that question. Oh, I'm not surprised. And I'm just like, how about I help you? Why don't you start by communicating your wants? Because he may not know. Today, just say, here's one thing that I want for us. Don't say, I want this for me. Mm -hmm. Say, I want this for us. Can you help me with this for us? And it's that that simple. But I think even funnier, they can't figure out that want. No. At all. It's always something very superficial. Nothing nothing tangible Mm -mm. between the two. Yeah. And you ask a guy, well, your relationship's on the rocks. What do you want? I just want peace. Well, what does that mean? What does peace look like for you? And they're like, huh. Well, I wish she. mm -mm. Stop saying you wish she. What does peace look like for you? How do you find peace within yourself? And then have her. Tell her what she needs to do to not disrupt that peace. A woman shouldn't be the source of your peace. She should be the source that doesn't disrupt your peace. Mm. That allows your peace to just be. That's my thinking. Because you can calm your mind and bring it home to her. And her give you that extra space to just let it be. As opposed to you trying to calm your mind but she's adding to the noise yeah you know she can not add to the noise but she can't quiet your mind only you can do that right you know and so as the woman you can say you know what i'm gonna not add to his chaos with him i'm gonna not add to her chaos right you know and and then go from there. That, that's, that's how you be intentional 
in that relationship and move it forward. Yeah. I mean, I guess there's even a different way to look, not even a different way. How can I champion you? Mm-hmm. How can I how can I champion you? How can I make you the winner? That's it. And vice versa. And here's something even funnier. Not even funnier, but think about you talk to people who have a successful, what they consider to be a successful marriage or relationship. And they'll say it's successful because we get along. Wrong. <laughs> so I know plenty of people who are in a relationship and they're nothing more than roommates because they get along. They're roommates, the kids are fine, and they just get along. Mm -hmm. But that's comfortable for them. And because it's comfortable, they just live in that. And then 20 years go by and kids are gone. And now it's uncomfortable again because now they're focused on each other. And they're like, oh, shit. I don't even know if I like this person now because I've never pushed the boundaries of making this a little uncomfortable to see where we can go. Yeah. And people are like, how are you? How do you know? You've never been married. Relationships with people are the same. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether it's a, a friendship, marriage, whatever. You have to push the boundaries of the relationship in order for it to grow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whatever that relationship is. Yeah. And that doesn't mean fighting that no. doesn't mean spitting that doesn't no, mean pushing the boundaries tarnishing. that doesn't mean beating down that's pushing, pushing up the, yeah pushing up you don't have to push down it. challenge the relationship yeah. how can we make it greater let's do this neither one of us have tried this before let's do this as my friend i'm gonna push you to push yourself you become uncomfortable and you may not like me because i made you uncomfortable did I make you uncomfortable or did I push you to just get out of your comfort zone? Mm -hmm. It wasn't me making you uncomfortable. It's just me saying, hey, get out of your comfort zone. You're making yourself uncomfortable. But now that you're over there, get comfortable with being over there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, only way you get comfortable is go through the uncomfort. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty simple. You know, there's a reason why they say comfort is the killer of success. Yeah. You know, it really is. It really is. It really is. You know, and so people don't want to believe that because they feel feel I'm comfortable in my success. That's an oxymoron. You're not comfortable in your success because if you're successful, then you're constantly uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You're because complacency isn't comfortable for you. It makes you antsy. And so you want to do more. So that being uncomfortable yeah. is what makes you move. Yeah. You know, you can't sit still. Yeah. People like me sit, always ask me, you know, how can you never take vacation? Well, when I do, it's short stints. I can go for three or four days. By that third day, I'm like, why am I just sitting here chilling on a beach? Something's wrong. I need to be doing something. Because that's not my comfort level. That's comfortable. Right. But I need to move. That's not your thing. This is, to me, and it's going to sound crazy, wasting valuable time. I've already reset. I don't need a week to reset. A couple days. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what's next? Should I reset on the 15-hour flight? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I, flew, I flew first class. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I've reset already. Let's roll. <laughs> he fly to the East Coast and back. Hey, tap it. <laughs> you know, and so it's, it's one of those things where everybody, but that's what drives success. You can't be ambitious and complacent at the same time. No. You can't be driven and comfortable at the same time. It, it, that shit doesn't work. No. Where's your drive coming from? No. Something's got to be fueling it. <laughs> and it's got to be that level of discomfort that makes you say, oh, shit, I got to get off this chair because my ass is hurting. Mm -hmm. But if I'm sitting there comfortable, I'm going to get fat and lazy because, hey, I'm comfortable here. <laughs> you know? Ooh. No, I'm just saying. Um, we could go on forever about this topic. Ooh, yeah, dude. yeah. But this, it's, this was a good one. I think we, 
myself included, all of us need to take a step back and really think about are we allowing ourselves to be uncomfortable enough to grow? Are we allowing ourselves the ability to not procrastinate? Do we stop pushing stuff aside? Mm-hmm. You know, that needs to be done now mm-hmm. because you think, oh, I have the time. You know, it's not guaranteed at all. It's, it truly, truly is not. Yeah. You know, and I truly hope that we would all, in every one of our endeavors of life, move with intent. You know, your relationships with your kids, with your significant other, your work life, your social life, if you move with intent, it can only get better. It does not get worse when you move with intent, set boundaries and learn how to be uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Start every day off. What's my intention for the day? Yeah. Start every single day off. You start the day off like that, you're winning. You've already started. Mm-hmm. You're winning. And do more than do more than write it down. Take action. Yeah. You know, intentions are great. But they're even better when you take action. Anyway, Coach KJ. <laughs> Man. Let's wrap it up, dog. That was, a, that was good. Yeah. That was With, good. Where are they going to find me? They're going to find me at Coach KJ Knows on Instagram. And CoachKJ.com. You're going to find me at Lionel Hunt on IG. You'll find me at HuntSpine.com. Um, go check out the, the HuntFoundation.org. Uh, great things happening there Coach and I You'll find us both On podcast SOE.com S-O-E. Everything Coach and Doc um, Check out the IG as well At SOE underscore podcast um, Every Saturday Stay tuned 11 o'clock For 11 the warm up show We had a doozy this past Pacific week Pacific Standard Time <laughs> It's a doozy And every Wednesday The podcast comes out On all your platforms That you can think of YouTube Spotify Apple Go check us out Subscribe Check like, it out. Seriously. Comment. Let us know what you want to hear, things like that. And be and, sure uh, to share. Be yeah, sure to share. Let's keep this rolling, all right? Yeah. And uh, we out. We out.